tell us if we have a quorum? I'll roll call. Certainly. Uh, Dr. Ruth Cox? Present. Tripp Yer? Here. Jim Bisbee? Here. John Blackwater? Here. Peggy Broadway? Here. Tony Bryant? Here. Ellen Sheridan? Here. Annette Stone, she said she'd be here, so she may be late, but we'll find out. Uh, she's currently not here. Candace Sullivan? Present. Okay, we do have a quorum. Thank you, sir. I call for a motion to dispense with the reading of the minutes. So move. Have a second? Second. Second over here. All of those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Hearing none, the motion passed. The Historic Preservation Commission is a public commission appointed by the City of New Bern's <coughs> Board of Aldermen. It is responsible for preserving and safeguarding New Bern's locally designated historic districts downtown and Riverside based upon U.S. Departments of Interior Standards, state statutes, city ordinances, and New Bern's historic guidelines. Two of the major tasks of the HPC include approving applications for a certificate of appropriateness and preventing demolition of historic structures due to neglect. The HPC holds a quasi-judicial hearing on applications for a certificate of appropriateness. The commission hears sworn testimony and evidence provided by the applicant, by parties who have received notice of the hearing, and by others who can justify that they have relevant evidence and are affected directly by the application. The commission cannot consider comments based on personal likes or dislikes, hearsay or personal opinion that cannot be directly related to specific historic guidelines. Likewise, commissioners shall refrain from stating personal opinions, personal likes or dislikes, or hearsay during a hearing. The commission's decision on an application is based solely on testimony and evidence presented at a hearing that directly relates to the historic guidelines. At this time, we will swear in anyone who is going to make any presentation tonight. If you will come forward to the middle here and sign in. If, if, if you are having us look at any of your work, then you need to come and sign in. So tonight is every night that we meet, I'll go over the process that we're going to use tonight. The HPC administrator provides an overview of an application. The applicant or their representative presents the application. Proponents and opponents who receive notice of the hearing can present evidence. Others, uh, rebuttal is allowed by the applicant and by proponents and opponents who receive notice. Others who can justify that they have relevant information and will be directly affected can present evidence. The HPC administrator presents the staff's findings and their recommendations. The applicant or the representative has an opportunity to make final comments on their application. 
Commissioners discuss the evidence and may ask for clarification from the applicant or their presenter. The chairman calls for a motion to approve or deny the application with stated findings of fact. The motion is discussed by the commissioners. The chairman calls for a vote on the motion by the commission. A COA can be approved. It can be approved with conditions or it can be denied. So we will go to the first application, which is 521 East Front Street. Okay, we'll start with the um, application as we see here on the screen. Yes, all the screens are working. Yes. So for 521 East Front Street, uh, the applicant is Ms. Sylvia Whitford, and the application includes an attachment as well as the guidelines and the description of the materials. This is the uh, description of the work. And we have uh, a photograph of the subject location. Uh, this is a, a former garage uh, where the roof has uh, been removed some time ago and the owner would like to replace the roof uh, as it was and also add garage doors on the front. And she provided a sketch. Uh, this primarily shows the garage doors. And these garage doors are hinged on the sides, uh, not the typical overhead doors. Uh, and so it's double, double uh, doors in each case, and each uh, pair of wood doors uh, uh, has windows in the top as well. And then uh, we provide the zoning and inspections review. Oh, and I guess I should. Uh, there's probably some questions about the material, so um, go over that. So uh, the intent is that the uh, materials are wood, metal, and brick. Uh, there's some infill of brick at the back wall. Um, and then, uh, let's see, at this time there are three brick walls standing that was once a garage, circa 1916 to 24. The roof has been gone for many years, but it's obvious that it had a shed roof. I uh, would like to replace the shed roof with one as nearly the same as possible, including a metal roof. It would be a 4x8 to support the 2x6 rafters over the doors. And I would like, also like to replace the doors using what would have been used in 1924. With research, I learned garage doors of that area use doors hinged on the sides. Uh, and... She included in the application the guideline for the metal roofing that we have, 4.5.4, I believe it is. I think, I think Tripp has that one memorized, is that correct, Tripp? I do. Yes. <laughs> so 4.5.4 and 4.5.1. So, all right. So going, sorry, down back down to the zoning and inspections report. Um, the zoning administrator has said that it does meet the zoning, uh, the land use ordinance, and the chief building inspector said that it does require a building permit. <coughs> so other than that, we're ready to provide uh, recommendations. Okay. Are there any members who have a conflict of interest with this project? Seeing none, are there any members who have any issues on the application's completeness? Seeing none. So, ma'am, would you like to say anything else other than what's, what's already been presented? Uh, are you not, are you not yes. the person? Yes, she can't, she can't always hear. Can you go and help her? Yep. So she asked if you had any further comments. Okay. Well, just stand right there for a minute. Yes. Just stay right there. Just stay right there for a minute. Okay. 
So there, are there any opponents out there? There's only three other people to this. Okay? Are there any proponents? I see none. So we don't need to go through all this rebuttal. Does anybody have relevant evidence for standing? I don't see any of those people. Is there any city, state, government people? There's only three people there. They're not raising their hand. So, are, uh, do you have anything else you want to say at this point in time? No. Okay. <laughs> All right. You can have a seat then. You can sit back down. Thank you. Okay. All right. Okay. Members of the commission, do you have any questions? We've seen this in design review. Do you have any questions at this point in time? No, ma'am. I don't hear that. It, we went over this in detail in, in design review. That's why we don't have many questions. Um, and the applicant is aware of the things that she's going to have to do. So, hearing no questions, may uh, I call for a motion? Wait a minute. Oh, what? What? You want to go through? Oh, my... yes. Go ahead. Sorry, I forgot Back about you. Go ahead. Tell us what you recommend. <laughs> sorry, I forgot about you. I'm moving right along here. Yes, yes. Okay, sorry. Yeah, let's have what you got to say. Okay, so uh, this is an application for Ms. Sylvia Whitford, uh, and her, the project address is 521 East Front Street. The historic property name is the Charles Slover Kitchen Quarters and Smokehouse. Uh, at least that's the name of the property. This is a garage that's uh, on that property. Um, so we have uh, for contributing, the house is, yes, contributing uh, the garage possibly due to its age. Uh, and so the National Inventory description from 2003 said that it was the house itself was built 1848 to 49 and describes the house, but uh, there is no description of the garage. The Sandbeck description from 1988 um, also had nothing about the subject garage, uh, neither with the kitchen and quarters nor with the Charles Slover house because there is some question about whether or not the garage actually initially was built uh, as an accessory to the Charles Slover, the neighboring Charles Slover house. Anyway, so Sandbeck doesn't have that on there either. So the project 521 East Front Street is to include a new roof structure for the garage, metal roofing, and new wood hinge doors in the secondary and tertiary ABCs. So the staff submits the following historic district guidelines are appropriate to this application. For accessory structures, 2.6.2. For modifications, 3.2.1, 3.2.3. For windows, doors, and openings, 4.3.3. For roofs, 4.5.1, 4.5.4. For masonry, 5.1.1, 5.1.2, and 5.1.4. And for paint, 5.4.2, 5.4.3, and 5.4.4. The statements of reason based on the information contained in the application and staff's judgment are, the project is located in the, not the narrow stitch, but the tight weave development pattern in the tertiary ABC. The proposal is a project to replace a long gone roof and garage doors for a historic garage. The proposed design components and materials meet the requirements of the guidelines. The zoning administrator and chief building official have reviewed this project and commented accordingly. Five, the project is not incongruous with the guidelines. So staff recommends the commission approve this application to include a new roof structure for the garage, metal roofing, and new wood hinge door, hinged garage doors in the secondary and tertiary ABCs. Thank you. Now, again, can I have a motion for this project? Um, um, normally we ask the applicant if they have some co additional comments at this point. Okay. And then you may want... You, I did I ask her before, but okay, I'll ask her again. And I may have raised some questions among the um, HPC members as a result of my recommendations. Okay. Do, do you have anything else you'd like to say? Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> no. no. Okay. 
Does anybody else have any questions? The only question I had was, did we determine how the roof is sloped? Is it dropping? Is it flat? It, if, if you bring up the picture, it's going along the line of the wall as she drew it. It's going to be sloping. But if you go back yeah. to, can you go back? You see in that back wall where there's a line that goes down, that slopes down? Uh-huh. That's where it's going to go. Oh, okay. Does that help you with that? Thank you. Anybody mm -hmm. else? So it's what would be called a shed roof. It's yeah. flat but sloping and from uh, a high point at the front to a lower point at the back. Okay. I'm going to ask again. Can I have a motion? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. I move that we find the application for proposed or a certificate of appropriateness for 521 East Front Street to be not incongruous with New Bern's Code of Ordinance sections 15-411 to 15-429 and New Bern's Historic District guidelines based on the following specific guidelines and findings of fact. Guidelines being accessory structure 6 point or 2.6.2 Modifications 3.2.1 and 3, windows and doors 4.3.3, roofs 4.5.1 and 4.5.4, masonry 5.1.1 and 5.1.2 and 5.1.4, paint 5.4.2, 5.4.3 and 5.4.4, the statements of reason, or excuse me, the statements of fact project is located in the tight weave development pattern of the tertiary in the tertiary ABC. Proposal is a project to replace a long gone roof and garage doors for a historic garage. Proposed design components and materials meet the requirements of the guidelines. Zoning administrator and chief building official have reviewed this project and commented accordingly. The projects are not incongruous with the guidelines. Okay. Is there any discussion? Can I have a second? I'll second. Okay, there's a second over here to the right. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, hearing none, the motion passed. Can I have a motion to issue a COA? So moved. So moved over here to the right. Do I have a second? Second. Second over here to the left. And all of those in favor say aye. 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 All of those opposed, hearing none, you can issue a COA. So you can get your COA. It's passed. Okay? Good, yes, ma'am. That's the sign. And you can get with him about it. I'll be serious. Yes, you are. Yeah. Yeah, you're done. So, and I'll be sending you the COA in a few days. Thank you. All right. Okay. Thank you for fixing it up. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay? So 720 Pollock Street. For 720 Pollock Street, here we have the application uh, for Jacob and Jennifer Gilray. Uh, they have their um, authorized representative here from AG's Home Solutions. Uh, that's Natalie Edwards. Um, you'll see here parts one, two, and three are all filled out with 3C attached for the materials. Uh, this uh, to note is that the application mentions the inclusion, let me go back, it mentions the inclusion of a pergola and a shed. Those are, have been requested to be removed from the application. One second here. On the second, on the next page. Uh, in the meantime, this is the um, survey that was done for the property as was requested at our first design review yes. meeting. Yes. Uh, and they discovered that they could no longer fit the shed and the pergola in the backyard. And so that's why they've been removed. Uh, we can come back to this if you want. Um, uh, to note here is from the front wall of the house um, to the property line is 4.9 feet. Then uh, this was their original sketch of the various project parts, um, labeled with letters A, B, C, D. It's a little bit um, out of focus because it was enlarged. 
So A is the yellow area on the right side of the house. Um, B is the fencing, that is the other yellow area on the right side of the drawing, and then does a reverse L back to the house. Um, C is lawn area, which is shown with cross hatching. D is uh, uh, paving and gravel. Uh, the paving area, or is it, it may just be gravel around the HVAC units at the back of the house, as well as underneath the stairway on the left hand side of the drawing. <coughs> and then E is the green area <coughs> out front, which includes uh, some uh, new brick paving on the left side of the E area and then the very thin uh, strip of green, green is some landscaping. Uh, the red circle is gone from the project. All right, oh, and here's, it's, here's the legend <coughs> for that. So and here's now where they've requested that they re remove from the application the storage shed and the pergola. Um, and then adding another guideline to the application for the front porch roof. Uh, next, <clears throat> this is an example of the plantings they're planning on putting along between the house and the driveway, that very letter A area. The letter B was the fencing uh, to be placed on the right property line and it, uh, or the eastern property line. Uh, would be wooden pickets, 36 inches tall, even though it's behind the um, face of the uh, front face of the house. Pickets uh, one and a half inches in between the slats and eight foot wide gate at the driveway made of the same picket material and primed on all sides and painted white. So this is the um, until recently, this is the fence that was there until recently uh, and is to be replaced by the uh, new fence. So that's along the east property line. Uh, here's the sketch they have for that, picket fence plus the eight foot wide gate uh, showing three foot high dimension. Uh, <clears throat> and this shows where the gate would be in that reverse L uh, that we saw on the plan, uh, essentially at the end of the driveway. Uh, the existing grass would be would remain except for the pa the area with pavers. Uh, that was the other yellow line in the middle of the yard, um, and so these are the pavers that would be used for that area. And then the gravel uh, landscape fabric and gravel uh, goes around the two mechanical units there and then underneath the white staircase there. And let's see, do we have any other details there? Oh, they're also planning on putting us the same picket fence around the mechanical units. I think I need to talk to them about painting that uh, white thing on the back of the, on the back wall. Uh, landscaping in the front of the property. Uh, they're going to remove some old stumps, remove unlevel bricks, uh, and then extend uh, and then uh, uh, replace some of that area with new leveled out bricks. So uh, we'll see that in a minute. But in the meantime, they also are mentioning the front roof. Um, they intend to extend the existing front porch roof, which as a hip roof across the house using the same material standing seam. And the steps are to stay as they are in the area to the left on down at ground level will remain a sitting area on the brick. So they're not changing the floor of the existing stoop, nor are they changing the actual steps. So this is the existing front of the house and they're intending to extend this small little roof to the left, all the way to the left corner. Somewhat similar to, they show uh, this small little picture here. Um, 
of a similar situation in the district, just to give you a bigger idea of what it would be like. It would be standing seam, uh, roofing, meeting 4.5.4, .4, uh, and they would be using six by six wooden posts, painted white, and the steps would be stained gray. And so here's their sketch of what that would look like. Um, so uh, we talked about at the design review meeting, uh, uh, potentially not removing that white post that is shown scribbled over. Um, but, uh, uh, and uh, it's uh, missing, say, a header across the top of those in the sketch. But uh, this is to get uh, an idea of what they have in mind. And you can see the steps <coughs> um, come down and there's still quite a bit of space to the left of that. That's where the next drawing comes in. So um, this uh, red marker on the photograph here represents where the new brick would be to create, basically extend that landing out as a small uh, seating area out front. And the uh, dirt between that and the small little garden wall will be planted with um, boxwoods as well as the same planting area in front of the steps. Okay, um, and then we have our zoning and inspections review. So the zoning administrator says that it does meet the requirements of the land use ordinance, and the building inspector said it will need a, a uh, building permit for the front porch reconstruction. Otherwise, I'm ready with uh, recommendations when you are. Okay. So are there any conflicts of interest with any members? Seeing none, are there any issues with the application's completeness? Does the applicant want to add anything else to what has already been said? No. Are there any notified proponents in our audience? Opponents? Anybody with relevant standing? I don't see any. Is there anybody from the state, the city, or the government who would like to make any comments? Don't see it. So, could we have the staff findings? I'm not going to go forget you didn't stop. <laughs> All right. So, for Jacob and Jennifer Gilway, their project at 720 Pollock Street. The historic property name is the Hill Rental House. It is a contributing resource in the National Register Inventory Description from 2003. Has the house built about 1880 to 1890. It's two stories, three bays wide, shed roof entrance porch in the right front bay back in 2003. Bracketed eaves, gable front roof, and interior chimney. The Sandbeck description from 1988, uh, pulling from, except from there, it's distinguished by its late Italianate style bracketed cornice. Although altered and enlarged during the 20th century, it retains much of its interior and exterior detailing. Evidence is still visible in the front gable, indicates that the house originally had cornice returns and decorative sawn barge boards, which would have been similar to the original gable treatment of 721 Pollock Street of about the same date. Of note are the six over six sash, the front entrance door with its arched upper panels. A full width front porch originally sheltered the facade. So for 720 Pollock Street, the project is to include a front porch reconstruction, new rear fencing, and new patio paving in all AVCs. So staff submits the following historic district guidelines are appropriate to this application. Landscaping 2.4.3, fences and garden walls 2.5.1, 2.5.3, design principles 3.1.1, 3.1.5, modifications 3.2.1, 3.2.3, and 3.2.4, additions 3.3.2, 3.3.3, walls, trim, and ornamentation 4.2.1, 4.2.4, entrances 4.4.1, 
4.2, Fruits, 4.5.1, 4.5.4, Wood, 5.2.1, 5.2.2, Paint, 5.4.2, 5.4.3, 5.4.4. Statements of reason based on the information contained in the application and staff's judgment are 1. The project is located in the tight weave development pattern in all ABCs. The pro proposal is a modification project. The proposed 3. The proposed design components and materials meet the requirements of the guidelines. 4. The zoning administrator and the chief building official have reviewed this project and commented accordingly. And 5. Except for the clarification of some details for the front porch, the application is not incongruous with the guidelines. So staff recommends the commission approve this application to include a front porch reconstruction, new rear fencing, and new patio paving in all AVCs with the following condition, that the COA is not valid until the applicant provides more information about the details of the construction of the front porch to the HPA, who will review and approve when appropriate. Sir, do you have any final comments? Oh, just that last point. Sir, if you could come up here to Please. the microphone. <laughs> so the last part of the approval of the material, is there any questions that you guys have that I can answer right now as far as the material? So maybe we can go ahead and get it approved. We, we may have some once we get to our discussion, but okay. anything else you want to say right now? I don't think so, no. Okay, so you, you just stay right there. So, members. Do you all have any comments or any questions that you'd like to ask the gentleman? Yeah, just Sorry. one. When, when the new uh, roof is completed on the front porch, are all the vestiges of the short existing one gone so it just appears like a, there's one roof there? Yes, sir. It'll be one roof there, just consistent all the way across, and it'll be a standing seam roof. And we will do a small hill on each end. You've seen that, I'm sure, in a lot of the historical yeah. homes like that. So. What, what kind of conversation did we have at design review about how this porch modification um, appears in the primary area of visual concern? Uh, yeah, I wasn't there either, so I feel like this is a pretty so, significant a front so, porch addition that's <coughs> so I got a so question in the air. In the inside of the, 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 the ceiling, is there going to be the new ceiling put in, or is it going to be the wrapper? It'll be a wood ceiling, a, a taking room pine wood ceiling. All right, so I'm going to try again. Yeah. Um, Sandbeck description says a full width front porch originally sheltered the facade. I, I got that. Um, 1880, 90, has the grade changed since then? There was some discussion about the spacing on the columns that they would be. Um, framing the windows versus the actual sketch that was on the, uh, I know that Matt, you had mentioned that, um, that it, it looked, that the center one looked off kilter because it wasn't centered between the windows or there was going to be some way to balance this somehow. I think he made a comment while I go where it was in the notes that maybe not do away with the one column that was marked out there. And if we keep that column there, then just one on the corner would be all we need. We wouldn't need one back in the center there. So I think that'll look good. So let me get this straight. If you take the one column out, you still want, if you, if you leave the one column that you've Don't got leave marked that out picture, there, Matt, you're going to take the, the other one on to, mm -hmm. to the left, down. I, I, he keeps running. Yeah. Stop. Yeah, stop. Right there. Stop. <laughs> Yeah, so it, it's hard from the picture I printed. It was hard to sketch this out, but the the first post will be more to the end of the house or just inside it, where it catches the end of the hill. So it's going to be to the left of that window, more or less centered between the corner of the house and the side of the window. If we have the next post, the next post would be centered between the two windows, and then we could, of course, keep the two posts on the landing. So and it would be balanced. So, so there'd be four four posts. Correct. Okay. And, and it's not brown. It, well, <laughs> just, just so you're not confused. So the landing is not changing? No, ma'am. No. Okay, so the, now, Matt, if you don't mind, the example that you showed was 
was a house nearly at grade. This house is much elevated, and that's a way different. The, whatever example you showed were, are you trying to say in this house that the that there's not a landing completely underneath the porch? Is that what these, or is this is just an example of a full width porch? Uh, this was represented as a full width porch. More the roof kind yep. of Yep, and showing how a hipped roof looks there. So, um, I'd like to see an example of a full width porch with a half a landing mm -hmm. and post that tall with a house that tall off. Like I, I'd like to see an example right. of that. I feel like so, this is a really significant yeah. front to just be. And the issue with that is because it is higher than the house that you're talking about with the example is on grade so they can right. do a full front Makes porch. Sense. That one is high enough that even if you do a full front porch, you don't have anywhere to run the steps down. That's right. But even if you, I mean, like one, just looking at like what if you extended to the extent that you could get the steps underneath the porch would be like the first thing I would try to wrap my brain around. But that, so I would not be in favor of this at all. The steps may need to make a turn. They can't. They go, they'll end up out on the sidewalk is the problem. There's so no space there. There's to do no that. space. So, so the steps already make a turn in a sense that after right. the landing there's... Right. Where the landing is, there may need to be a second landing that is smaller. I don't think there's any room for it. I remember when we talked about this in Design Review the, the time before, <coughs> there wasn't room. So it was down this one here. So you see here, this is, you have two, two more steps between the landing and the sidewalk. So but that second step is um, a landing, at, well, practically a landing in its own right. So there may be uh, some space to pick up two more risers, I suppose. Well, there's, so, but there's room to bring that landing out as far as you could to the edge of wherever this red spot is. Mm -hmm. Like if you're gonna to try to keep the whole stair riser underneath that porch, then, because you can't go out to the street unless you did do a small turn. So, but, but to like cut that in half, and just half a stair landing being underneath that porch, I don't think you can show me an example of that. So right district. next door um, okay. is a similar, but not exact example. Hold on, I have to get out of this. Wrap that ahead of time. This one here. So this is the subject house here. Mm -hmm. Okay, but right. that that landing is completely underneath that roof. Right. So then over here, this house <coughs> okay. actually has down on this left side does have the okay. stairs starting underneath the porch. Now these look very steep, uh, but, but it comes all the way to the edge of where the overhang. Right. Yeah. So this is similar, it's albeit it's a very minor, a very small, or a very short distance of the porch that's essentially affected or, or um, done in that way. But I think, uh, and in this case, the stairs exit into the driveway, into their <coughs> own driveway. So now going back to this house. Uh, because the door is on, this is this is the subject property's driveway here, mm -hmm. um, and since the door is on the same side as the driveway, they can't do that here, right? Unless you put a ladder in, I suppose. But okay, um, Matt, there we go. Can you can you make that that uh, image smaller for a second? Smaller. I mean, in other words, not zoom a, out. Like blown out. Oh, you mean zoom out a little bit? Or zoom in. There you go. Right here. Right. Now the neighboring house is different because it's set back far enough where they can have a full porch and a step and a landing. So that's that's more typical, but that's obviously not this case. So that can't actually work um, for these people. Now, what they are trying to do, the intent is to well, and their first and their first proposal was to basically do a front porch like the neighbors on the left. Um, because they wanted to restore the original porch that was originally there uh, and have a porch 
and then have steps come down from the, from the front of the porch. But in our first meeting with them, their first design review meeting, we pointed out that there's not enough room to do that. So they kind of ended up with realizing that this is what they're proposing is what they're left with being able to do and still have the roof extend all the way across like it used to. So my only concern is is that the hip roof, which is, is a fine roof, is going to be so high it may it may actually. I mean, can, I mean it's already high now, but it's only a little. It's just over the door, the little portico. My concern is that is the house to the left. It's going to be much higher than that, and it may be much higher than one to the right as well. It may stick out a little bit. I'm not sure what else you can do. Just to be honest with you, I mean. I, See what you're trying to accomplish, um, but it, it, it may be much higher. Now, maybe that's a big deal, maybe not. But there you go. That's a good one right there. So, when we put, if we do the roof all the way across, we're going to change the slope of that roof. So, if you look at the yellow house, you've got that roof's got probably a 412 to a 512 pitch on it. Yeah. Where the other one is probably a 212. So we'll raise the backside of the roof up just below the windows, just like it is on the yellow house. And from the picture, it looks like the windows pretty much line up with each other, and so with the roofs. So the pitch would match more what the yellow house is. Ma Madam Chair and Commission, I just would suggest that this come back to the Commission, that this not be a staff approval. There's a lot of details here that need to come back to us, given where this house is located, the complexity of the driveways and the precedents. Where I just would, you know, I think there just needs to be more detail and thought put into it, and it needs to come back to the commission, given this is a front porch. So, I mean, I don't think we can hammer it out right now and figure it out. I feel like it needs to be The other things on the, the proposal, if we want to do that, but ask that this front porch come back would be my suggestion. I, I, I can think of some ways to mitigate what I think the, the problem you're posing. It's a very long post sticking up in the air. I, I can think of some ways. I'm not sure we could create it here tonight. Right. right. To be clear, we are thinking uh, four post, right? The so way it is I'm now. I, I think we're thinking ask them to bring it back to the commission is what I would suggest. I think Peggy's asking if we're asking them to bring four posts back to the commission. Oh, we were trying to give them suggestions of what to do. Can, can I propose we maybe have a site visit, which we have done, but not recently, where we convene and go look and draw little lines in the air. And <laughs> I think we need better drawings and understanding okay. what they're doing. So, so let us decide do we, we, we're going to have to do something because this application has been brought forth to us. So we either have to, let me make sure I understand what we have to do. We either have to approve it or we have to approve it with um, conditions. Conditions that yeah, allowed. approve it with conditions or we have to deny it. Correct. And and just we, as a am I, am clarity, I right about that? You are correct. I would add, however, that in approving the application, you're approving all parts of the application. Well, I understand that. That's why I'm going through our options. Right. Um, approving with a condition can be an option. However, and a condition that before we even get to what conditions are applicable, you all would have to find that this project is not incongruous with the guidelines. Mm -hmm. And if you can't check that box, then there aren't conditions that can solve that issue. So I think one of the first things that this commission in determining whether to approve, approve with conditions or deny, need to analyze and make a conclusion or try to make a conclusion about whether the project as it's being presented to you today is congruous or incongruous. So if we say it's incongruous with the guidelines, then what would our options be? Then you could ask the applicant to revise their application and you can continue the application to another date to resolve any outstanding issues or you could 
denied. And for that to happen, we have to have a motion that says that? That says what? That says that it's incongruous with the guidelines? If you were to deny an application for a COA, you would have to make statements of reason, or you have to make findings of fact and statements of reason. So we have to go through incongruous. the whole process yes, and find findings of fact and make it incongruous and then put a condition on it of what we want them to do? No, ma'am. Okay, what do we do after we find it incongruous? How do we if, get If you get there. I'm saying, if we get there, then how do we get them to come back to us? You don't. Okay. The, a better way, if, if you're concerned about congruity or incongruity, a better way to deal with this would be to have a motion to continue the application, to give everybody an opportunity to understand, digest, and give the applicant an opportunity to come back to you with the information that you might need to make appropriate findings. So, so our another option would be to continue yes, it without making any decision at this point in time. Correct. That would be an option we have as well. You do have to have a reason for continuing. Yes. Okay. <coughs> okay. And we, if so, if we get if we ask to have it continued, we give a reason to do that, then we could do that and have them come back. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And uh, can the reason be uh, to give the applicant more time to give us more information? Correct. Okay. All right. Does everybody understand what we might be looking at? Is everybody okay with that? I'm okay with that, but I would just like to say that um, this is why design reviews are important because we have opportunities to talk with our applicants at that time with concerns. Um, and not much changed from the original conversation until today. Um, we asked for things to be brought back to this point, and I think as a commission, we, we owe our applicants that consideration during design review. So, I mean, any questions that we have at that point really need to be raised. Okay. So, can I have a motion to have this continued due to the need for, for what did you say? Additional information. To additional from the information. Can we be specific about the additional information? Do what? Can we be specific about the additional information? Sure. Because I feel like the rest of the application is fine. Well, we know that it has to do with the front porch. Well, I think it's part of the record. That, that should be in the motion. If, if, the, if your inclination is to move to continue this application, for 720? 720? 720 Pollock Street. Yes. If the motion might be something like a move to continue the application for a COA for 720 Pollock Street in order to give the applicant additional time to provide additional details regarding the front porch reconstruction to the next regularly scheduled HPC meeting, I think that might encapsulate everything that I'm hearing. Okay, could we have, could we have that as our Summit. consideration? Summit. We, have so, we got so moved. so moved. Thank you very much, ma'am. That's why you're here. We appreciate you. Yes, ma'am. Okay, we have a motion. Does everybody understand the motion? Second. Okay. We have a second. We got a second. We got a motion. We got a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Hearing none. So, sir, I'd ask you to get with Matt and go over. Again, some of what we've talked about that we've talked in design review and we've talked about here and then come to the next design review, which would be the first Wednesday uh, of April. next next month. So that would be the 6th of April. Is that correct, Matt? Yes. Okay. So get with him and and then you can we can hash this out some more in design review. So let me let me just make sure I understand correctly. We've been through one design review. Okay. Now we've got to come back to another design. That would be correct, sir. The board is okay with everything else, but I can't do any of the work until we come back a month from now to do this again. Well, I was wondering if that Well, was it's not a month. It's, it's like that. three I weeks. Was, well, it's three weeks for the design, and then I'm going to have to come back to this meeting yes, and get a final approval. So but that's I going to be another you, month. I think you are correct that he cannot work on this. Is that correct? Actually, can we, um, I believe the other two you items. can submit the landscaping as a minor work. And the fencing. And the fencing. Well, as long as, um, yeah. as long as the HPC directs me to do so, like we would in a design review session, um, they can they can uh, submit that as a minor work, and I process it like a minor work. 
the landscaping and the, the fencing. fencing. Just fencing. The, the fencing. The landscaping fencing. is a is definitely a minor. Okay. So the fencing. The fencing. That you can do that. Yes, sir. Do we need a motion for that? Uh, no. Okay. So you can you can you yep. can do that. You can present your fixing uh, fencing to Matt, and we can do that as a minor. But but I believe I am correct in saying no. You cannot work on the front porch. Is that right? right. I understand the front porch, yeah. but it was the elder items I was right. curious about. Right. Asking yeah. about so, so. so the landscaping is always a minor work in the fencing. Is it's usually questionable. Yeah. And um, in preparation for that kind of uh, situation, um, we've already contacted the neighbors uh, at, in the yellow house uh, regarding the fencing there, and they have been affirmed, they have provided an affirmative um, opinion of that fence. Okay, all right. All right, does that help you, sir? It does. And okay. Since I'm in front of you guys, can I ask one question about the design of the front porch so I've got an idea of what you may would itself when we come back to design agreement. And your idea, the posts are going to be long, tall. It's just going to look out of whack with the rest so of the neighborhood. What if we built brick columns to set the posts on so the brick columns are the same height as the existing porch, and then we set the posts on the columns? So then it's not going to look so tall with the wooden posts. I think that's a good option. To look good at. option. At yeah, I mean, otherwise, there's not many, many, many ways you can do this and have the steps in it. Um, without going out into the street or into the neighbor's driveway. So that's probably the best thing I can come up with. And I think the other thing you might be able to do is switch the stairs back against the front of the porch. Yeah. Bring the landing out more. Where the, where the shrubbery is. Now you might have to move some things. Well, I was thinking about that, but I'll check it and see so. when I come back to the design. But if we can do an internal stairs to keep it down to that regular or to the original yeah. landing. Let me look at it and draw so, it up, measure it up, draw it up, and I'll bring it so, back. So just in an effort to further help you, I can't think of an example where we have a stair underneath the front porch on, on the front of the, the home, where it would be in the middle, basically. Right. And, and, and so that, that, that would, you know, that, that gets very much into the incongruous territory, at least in my interpretation of things. Mm -hmm. Bringing the steps to the middle. Oh, well, what you proposed tonight. Okay. okay. Is that it? All right. Did so your we'll screens all go blank? Yes. Say that again? Yes. Oh, there it is. No, no, no. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to point out across the street, there is also this house, which has also kind of a similar situation where the stairs start underneath the porch. Oh, maybe more on the other side. Yeah, the purple house. That's yeah. not purple. House. <coughs> you can see right there. Okay, so um, if you will get with Matt about the fencing and making that a minor, and then if you and Matt will get together and uh, we will hash this out again at design review. Okay. Thank so, you very much. And let it, let us hash it out really well at that design review, so when you bring it back to us, we can just zip on through. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you so much. Come back and see Matt. Okay. 404 Avenue C. Yes. Hold on one second. Bring up the, uh... And who's here for Avenue C? Okay. So you all need to come up and be sworn in if both of you are going to talk. And let Matt swear you in. He, he'll, he's coming. Okay, if you can tell us about Avenue C. Okay, and what so we're doing here. Right, four oh four Avenue C. Uh, this is already an approved COA, uh, or they already have a, an approved COA for the vast majority of this project. Uh, they're here to modify uh, the design of the, uh, some details, designs on the front and side porch, as well as the gable for the, the workshop at the back. So that was the site plan that was approved. This is the, um, uh, uh, also the site plan at a larger scale that was approved. And here we're looking at um, the approved front.
front porch shows um, uh, three columns in the front and left, uh, left and right corners, uh, as well as two pilasters on the back wall, uh, and then uh, some stairs that are in between the, the middle two uh, columns. On the left, we have then the side porch, <clears throat> which has, again, the three corner posts on the protruding uh, porch, in this case on the side of the porch. And then uh, there's a row of columns along the back as the porch extends to the backyard or to the back dri driveway, past the second uh, doorway on the side. So, and then on, we do have the five stairs um, coming down towards the front, but then the walkway going out to the driveway. All right. And then this was the approved roof plan. You can see a um, gable roof on the front porch, a gable roof on the side porch with a shed um, coming along the side of the house, which hips around the corner. Actually, a hip roof now. <coughs> So this was the approved elevation, and a uh, particular note is the archway detail on the gable of the front porch. And here we see four posts on the front, and as a result, the stairway is the width of the uh, two interior posts. And then the side porch you can see here on the left side of this elevation, uh, and basically you're looking up the, the steps uh, on the front of that side porch. Uh, and you'll see three posts here because the, there is a post in the background um, <coughs> that represents that row of posts along the side. So, uh, and you can also see in this one the elevation in the background of the, um, of the workshop had a pet, has a pedimented entranceway uh, and in that pediment is also an arch cut out of that. So then this is the approved side elevation of the side porch. And again, you see the same kind of details as we saw on the front porch. And then you can see that hip roof that uh, extends along the side of the house to pick up the second doorway and then stairs down the back. Uh, and of course, also uh, kind of unique to this particular design was a, a kind of a lattice work of handrail pattern. So, and then that's the back view. That's the other side, which has a side view of the front porch on the left. And there's our garage. Uh, keep calling it garage, but it's a workshop. Sorry. All right. So, the applicants would like to propose this change uh, to the front porch, where the front porch uh, no longer has that archway in the in the uh, gable or pediment. I guess it's actually gable, uh, and and two columns instead of four across the front, and the uh, handrails then are inside those two, and the steps are the width of the distance between those two. So that's that. They also include a detail on the left showing those are wood pickets that are four inches on center. The pickets themselves are one and a half inches. Uh, and the detail at the bottom shows that, and the top shows that those pickets are on center with the hand handrail and the um, uh, bottom rail. And then this is a sketch of the side where, again, the uh, the arch is, is taken out of the gable end, uh, and instead, uh, let's see, where we retain four posts on this side, uh, and then uh, the hip roof continues around like it did before. Uh, the po this second post, I think, has shifted slightly in its location. The other point to make here is that the porch has been, this. Uh, gable has been widened in order to make the peak of the gable actually center on the house here. Uh, the approved plan had a slightly smaller one which meant that the uh, peak was off center. And the owners would like to have
have it on center. And then this would be the revised uh, workshop elevation where the gable end no longer has uh, the uh, no longer has that small little uh, gable roof on it, uh, and therefore also the arch is gone as well. Columns, all of that is gone. Okay, so. And it's going to be a single garage door. Yes. Yes. Door right. The doors. Mm -hmm. That's not a change, is it? Yes. So it's basically removing the entire gable and uh, columns. Uh, maybe I should go back to the plan. I think it was on the plan. Sorry. And it, it was left change off the top. top. Yes. So on the plan. Here's the workshop, and there's a pair of columns with a little <coughs> gable roof sheltering this uh, opening here. So the opening, is because it's a workshop, the opening is meant to bring materials in and out more than it is to park a car in there. What kind of doors were on it before? What's that? What kind of doors were on it before? This is a new construction. I know, but I mean... So in Charles's, but um, we already approved. Oh, doors yes. the same is what Charles. Doors the same. Okay, so we were the same. The question. Yeah. We okay. already approved this. Yeah. It was yeah. just right. the, the a design change on yeah. the that's changed. So I'm just asking when they changing the door design, but they're out. No, they're not. Yeah. No. no, they're not doing anything. To okay. No, it. Okay. It just seems like he's cleaned up the right. cat wing. So, um, so that's the application. We're going to go to the zoning and inspections and this of course meets the land use ordinance and of course the entire project uh, does uh, need a building permit and actually this is the zoning and inspections report from back in uh, back in November <coughs> anyway and then I'm ready with my recommendations okay are there any conflicts of interest to this project from anyone seeing none are there any concerns about the Applications completeness. We're seeing none. Sir, do you have anything else you want to add? Uh -huh. Again, in the audience, uh, are there opponents, proponents, people from the city, from the state, people with relevant standing? I don't see anybody out there doing that. <coughs> okay, so, sir, do you have anything else to say? Yes, nothing else to say. <laughs> so, we're going to go back. To your staff findings. You're up again. All right. I'll make this a little bigger here. You can all read it. Okay. So these recommendations are for Mr. and Mrs. Cardelli's project at 404 Avenue C. The historic property name is House. Uh, the National Register Inventory Description has this house circa 1940, uh, which I point out was 48 years old at the time of the inventory, uh, making it potentially uh, now um, contributing, which is why I have the question marks under contributing and non-contributing at the top. So it is described as a two-story gable-framed colonial revival house. Um, used to have a garage at the rear, uh, built around 1940, and it was a one-story frame garage. Um, that's subsequently been removed with the last COA, as approved by the last COA. Uh, Sandbeck has no description of the property. So the project here is to amend the approved and issued certificate of appropriateness to include revising the designs of the two porches and the gable of the workshop in all ABCs. So accessory uh, staff submits the following historic district guidelines are appropriate to this application. Accessory structures 2.6.2, .2, design principles 3.1.1, 3.1.4, 3.1.5. .1 for entrances 4.4.1, 4.4.4. For roofs 4.5.1, 4.5.4. For wood 5.2.1, 5.2.2. For paint 5.4.1, 5.4.2, 5.4.3, and 5.4.4. The statements of reason based on the information contained in the application and staff's judgment are, the project is located in the tight weave development pattern. 
The proposal revises the front and side porches and the front gable of the new workshop building in a way that incorporates the characteristics of the surrounding historic development pattern and uses basic shapes and forms that are common to the historic districts. Three, the proposed design components and materials meet the requirements of the guidelines. Four, the zoning administrator and the chief building official have reviewed this project and commented accordingly. And five, the project is not incongruous with the guidelines. So staff recommends the commission approve this proposal to amend the approved and issued certificate of appropriateness to include revising the designs of the two porches and the gable of the workshop in all ABCs. Sir, any other comments? No. Members of the commission, do you have questions at this point in time? I've got a question. Um, is the is the, the stoop, whatever you want to call it, front porch there, is it probably the same dimensions as the one that we originally approved? That was what was there originally, basically. All we did was make it a yeah. couple feet deeper so we could open the door and actually. But it had two posts and it had a simple A frame. So is it, is it going to go back to the original exactly. one? Exactly. Any other questions? Uh, Matt, Matt, can we go back to the sketches that are pertinent to tonight? Yeah, any one of those is fine. Well, not that one. <laughs> so, uh, Alexis, I just want to confirm, I'm sure this is your intent, but I'm looking at where the um, <clears throat> fascias come down and meet the eave fascias kind of at the bird box and that curve has been taken out and I just wanted to make sure that's your intent. Say that again now. So, so, so on this particular drawing, let's look at the upper well, we've roof actually line. Got the box, it does come onto the face. It does return. So it could be yes, right. but it's not curved, correct? No, and sir. It's it straight so, forward. So just exactly. So others might be able to follow where I'm tracking. Matt, if you could go no back curves. to the original, you can see there's a slight curve in the fenestration. Yeah, exactly. No, none of that. Which, which I think is appropriate. Just something that hadn't well, been I mean, talked it's about. It's clean and simple like original. Mm -hmm. So you're taking the curve out. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. No curves. No curves. No curves. No curves. No, no curves. curves. That, in that picture, yeah. no curves. Those architects. <laughs> Just a structural no... treated column. Okay. So, the much more like the time anyway. of the house's construction. <clears throat> Excuse me? Just more like the time of the construction of the house. That's right. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Any other questions at this point? Would someone then Just like. One. Did you have something? Got, got, got one more. Okay. Um, any changes to your balustrades? No, they're going to be just just simple. like they are. Yeah, typical originally. simple wood. Okay. Yeah, traditional is. Gotcha. Yeah, standard and ubiquitous as ever. So, so cha changed from the approved, which is this lattice. Type. Yeah, no, it's just standard. So changed, yes, just no pickles. longer lattice. I'm trying to save you another trip back. I get it. Please do. I, anything else that's not obvious to us at the moment? That okay, can I have a motion for this application? I move that we find the proposed amendment to the certificate of appropriateness for 404 Avenue C be not incongruous with New Bern's Code of Ordinance Section 15-411 to 15-429 and New Bern Historic District Guidelines based on the following specific guidelines and finding the fact. Accessory structures 2.6.2, .2, design principles 3.1.1, 4 and 5, entrances 4.4.1 and 4, roofs 4.5.1 and 4, Wood 5.2.1 and 2, paint 5.4.1, 2, 3, and 4. Findings of fact, the project's located in the tight weave development pattern. The proposal revises the front and side porches to the front gable of the new workshop building in a way that incorporates the characteristics of the surrounding 
historic development pattern and uses basic shapes and forms that are common to the historic district. The proposed design components and materials meet the requirements of the guidelines. The zoning administrator and chief building officer have reviewed this project and commented accordingly. The project's not incongruous with the guidelines. Is there a second? So we have second. a motion here, second down here at the end. Sir, thank you very much. Is there any other question? All of those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, it passes. Do I have a motion to issue a COA? I, I, I don't think I'm we sorry, need one. Oh, I guess we don't need one, yeah, because you already got that. Okay. All right. Is there anything else you need to do then, Matt? Nope. Nope. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Good luck. Thank you. Yeah, we love what Charles did. It's just that it it doesn't fit for us right there, but if it's a new construction, somewhere it'll be awesome. Okay. You. I got you. All we right. got you. Thank okay. You. Thank you. Okay. So our next one is 212 Change Street. That's correct. Okay. So we have here the application for 212 Change. Uh, property owners, Dr. and Ms. Scott McClellan, uh, and the applicant's representative is Lucian Vaughn of Tar Heel Associates. Uh, we see here all the information is provided on attachments and signed and dated by the representative who is hereby authorized, herewith authorized to represent the owner. So uh, they provided a photograph of the house from the front, just for reference, I guess. And we're basically talking about everything behind this house. <laughs> and nothing yes. in this photograph. But it gives you an idea of the style. All right. Um, so here's uh, the description of the work, um, where it's uh, alterations in the tertiary area, alterations uh, in the secondary area, which is the only one of which is the new uh, gate and uh, brick wall and columns there. And then they uh, actually spelled out all of the guidelines that they felt were appropriate for this. So, three pages of that. And then the list of materials for the foundation, the framing, the siding, Etc. Okay. And then they also provided a page from the uh, Sanborn, uh, not Sanborn, sorry, Sandbeck uh, book. So I'll be pulling the appropriate excerpt out of that. Oh, and it also shows you a photograph of the house back in 1988. That gives you an idea what we what we what we look at when we're bringing you that information. Okay, so now I'm going to have to make this smaller so we can at least at first so we can see the overall picture here. This is um, be smaller still. Whoa, there we go. All right, so here um, the street is out front to the right off the page actually. Um, and at the top right of the drawing, it says existing concrete drive. Um, and then at the end of that drive is where the uh, new gate and uh, new brick piers and, co and wall will be, uh, or are proposed to be. And then uh, the rest of the backyard will be landscaped pretty much and, and repaved in its entirety. Mixing it in together, with, so there is some existing to remain, sorry. Uh, the main features are that the, uh, in, uh, the changes are shown mostly in blue here. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit to get a better picture of that at the moment. And so um, in the middle of the picture at the moment, you'll see the uh, will be the expansion or extension of the existing screened in rear porch uh, to basically double its size. So down the middle of, of that blue rectangle, uh, blue area, there's a double dashed line. That's the existing exterior um, wall of the screened porch. 
That is to be removed as they are going to expand the porch to the left uh, in pretty much an equal amount, an exactly equal amount, <laughs> to the quarter inch. Uh, and uh, so the, there'll be a new screen porch wall out there. Uh, the uh, stairs then will be added in that wall uh, to go down to the ground just to the left of the porch. Uh, a minor note is they're adding a small bit of storage space. That's the solid blue lines there with the door. Um, they're also, uh, is that a new window in the, in the house? No. So that window stays the same. Uh, then, uh, proceeding downward from there, uh, there's an area with uh, that will have the roof only extended out um, to the left, um, uh, where it says, you can see the word beam, if, it, if it's big enough for you. There we go. <laughs> to create a, an outdoor kitchen area uh, that's covered by a roof. So the roof is extended out to this line out here. And then um, they'll be building their own uh, countertop and grill and such area there. But at the bottom, this is an existing brick wall that remains. And then there's a gate actually across here and then that connects to the brick wall along the side. So currently this entire backyard is um, um, enclosed by a brick wall with this gate here at this corner. Um, then the next piece to know about is this area with this gray hatching on it. It's, uh, those represent the, a pergola that's going to be added there. We'll see a sketch here in a minute about that. There's an existing fountain that's semi-circular in its plan here. Uh, and the pergola will be centered on that uh, and standing next to the brick wall and extending out into the yard from there. Uh, with a, a fireplace, table, and a couch, and things like that under the pergola. <coughs> then, <coughs> sorry. Um, then the only other thing left, other than the landscaping, is there's a small storage room um, addition uh, proposed for the back corner of the uh, accessory building that's already existing there. So, um, that was pretty much everything on the project, but uh, if you'll want to see more drawings about that, so I'm going to make this move to the next page. On this page, uh, all that is clarified uh, a little bit more by the foundations. So the gateway has foundations for the brick piers and the wall two little brick walls that uh, come off the piers. Then the foundations for the extension of the uh, screened-in porch. And then the small foundations for the two posts that will hold up the roof extension over the outdoor kitchen. The small foundations for the pergola. And then uh, the little bit for the small uh, storage closet on the back of the accessory building. We also see in, whoops, in this drawing, here's your pergola, sorry, uh, section <coughs> through the, this is for the storage closet, correct, right? And then the uh, foundation or structural drawings for the pier and the uh, bricks, uh, brick wall, piers and brick wall. Uh, there we have our isometric of the pergola, and then on the lower left we have the elevation of the uh, screened-in porch extension, and then actually behind that you can see the stairway coming out of the porch, and then behind that is actually the extension for the kitchen. So we see that better on the rear view where the porch extension is on the left with the new door and stairway. And then uh, there's actually a second set of stairs out of the porch as well down to the kitchen area. And we can now see that the, the roof for that entire area is all one roof. 
that just cuts off at different spots for um, how, depending on how far out it, it projects from the house. Um, then uh, we also have another elevation that represents a look at the uh, accessory building as if you're looking at it from the house across the yard towards the accessory uh, building in the back uh, and it shows then the pergola shown in front of that back house here in the gray on the left. Uh, which also shows you its height relationship to the existing brick wall, the distance it is from the wall, uh, those kinds of features and factors. And its relationship to the height of the roof behind it. All right, um, this is actually a section now of the uh, screened in porch extension, showing the footings, the framework, the rafters, the beams, etc. And then behind that is the same um, the posts, the beams, and the rafters for the uh, roof over the kitchen, uh, which then is also shown here on the right. And then this is the new um, design for the gate. Um, different from what we saw in design review, uh, but the, this would be a new, new brick piers and new brick walls uh, that match the existing uh, brick walls that surround the backyard, and then this new gate. The gate itself is six feet high, so that then shows you that the, the brick wall portion is also six foot high, but the piers are taller. They're actually seven feet plus to the top. Then, oh, and then I think I left in the, um, the previous design here, which I also had the structural designs for that. But that was the previous design that we saw before, <coughs> but no longer relevant. This drawing shows the paving uh, for the backyard. So the kind of brownish area is the new pavement and that, I'm sorry, the light brown area would be the pavement area and the, say, medium brown area is all the landscaping. Um, and so that gives an idea where all the paving is, where all the landscaping is. And then we also, at the design review, asked them to provide, and this is the planting plan for that, showing the names and species of every single one of those plants. Um, and then at the design review, we asked them to provide a chart showing the replacements for any removed trees. So I'm gonna zoom in here some more. And at the top here, um, there's one tree to be removed. It's a crepe myrtle uh, located at the northwest corner of the home. Uh, and new, they're actually adding three trees in, uh, one other crepe myrtle, uh, one star magnolia, and one Japanese maple. And then they also list all of the various plants by name and the numbers and the size of the So uh, then our, our zoning and inspections review shows that this project does meet the requirements of the land use ordinance and will require a building permit. Other than that, we're ready for our recommendations when you are. Okay, do we have anybody who has a conflict of interest with this? I one? need to be excused. Okay. So can we have <coughs> a motion to have Ms. Peggy removed? Ms. Madam Chair, yeah. I, I think... Uh, the, the member would need to state the purpose of their for their recusal. Peggy. Peggy, why, why do you have to? I live next door. You live next door. Okay. No. Did you receive a letter? No. Well, maybe I did. Did I receive a letter? Maybe. You got sent one, but who okay. knows what got delivered. I got another. <laughs> okay. 
right, so can I have a motion for her to be removed? So moved. So moved. Do we have a second? Second. Second over here. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Hearing none. You're removed for the time being. Oops. Okay. Anybody got any issues with the application complete? So, sir, do you want to make any other comments at this time? Good evening. I'm Lucian Bonnell, Tory Associates. Um, Matt, I was going to uh, address the fund drive that I bought in your office. Yes. Uh, that fund drive has on it uh, the concerns that were addressed at design review. Uh, Isn't that what we just saw? So the concerns were that we distinguished that which was the original house that uh, Peter Sandbeck uh, discussed in his book was built sometime between 1890 and 1895. And then the rear addition that we're adding on to was built in 1996. And it was my company that did that addition to the rear of that uh, house. So we're we're adding on to uh, a structure that's 25 years old in the back. Uh, and we distinguished that uh, on a drawing, uh, as I was asked to do, so what, what is original 1890 and what is 1996? And so that's, that's on a drawing we did. Which before. drawing would that be? Because this is your plan. It's this on all of them. Which one? Just pick, um, pick the landscape plan. Landscape plan doesn't have. Are you on the sun drive? Yep. It would have all the bushes and the trees named at the top of the one you just showed a while ago. Is that one? That's what we won't have any pictures on. Oh, 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 the very last one. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay. So. Yeah, I think uh, I had it in there, but I zoomed in on the. Mm. On the tree removal part. Uh, to, to the right. Oops, um, sorry. Yeah, we'll go back to the tree We remote. put dates on the structure so you could see what was uh, the original home. And it basically ends uh, at that back wall uh, to, to your right. And, um, but the, the back wall did not line up. So the, the addition that we did. What back wall are you talking about on well, this picture? I don't have anything to point with, but... Um, Zoom out to the left. What back wall? It's all set in wall. We've got one wall, one wall here and one wall here. That's pretty much the back of the house. And we took up uh, and did the addition all to the left. Oh, I see. Are you saying essentially where these steps show at the top? Right, and then draw a straight line down from there. Yeah. Okay. That was the original dwelling, and then everything to the left of that was the two-story addition in 1996. Okay. And then go all the way to the left. to offset that right. by four inches. Yes. And that's, that's noted on this drawing. It's noted on our foundation drawings, yes. all the drawings. I noted that you had done that. <laughs> we discussed that. Okay. So, but, Thank but you. We did, we did bring it back uh, a week later with revived drawings. Uh, showed the tree that was going to be taken out. Um, and which tree is that? It's a crepe myrtle. You could, I know it's uh, a crepe myrtle. The bottom we, right of the of the drawing right now. Bottom right. Oh, over here, the bottom right, the big one there. Okay, you wrote to be removed. Okay. And are you putting one of your new trees there or not? No. No, you're not putting the new trees you're putting in that space. Okay. Thank you. 
And we appreciate you naming all of these bushes and trees. <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> it is a whole lot. Uh, as I recall, that was... So was where on this map, can you show us where the three new trees are going to be going? Well, the star magnolia shows up right above the word stone pavers, and it's pointing to the edge of that large tree there. Stone pavers. You see right here, stone pavers, right? Okay, help me. Fuck and then star magnolia. Star magnolia. Okay. And then there's a circle. It's actually pointing to the edge of the tree. I'm going to move this up a little bit so you can see the rest of it. Yes, that would help me. Okay. So that, and the center of it is shown here. And what's going there in the center? The star magnolia. Oh, that, that's the star magnolia there. Okay. Right. And where are the other two trees going? Um... I'm not sure. Let's see. We have uh, supposedly another crepe myrtle. Is that the one in the upper left here? Now on the lower left? Yeah, Muskogee. Yeah, Muskogee or whatever. That's, so this one all the way here on the left is new. Right? And that's right on the, uh, right at the end of the property there. And is shading the playground. Uh, and then where would the third one be? Do you know? The new existing trees mentioned in the guidelines are if you take out a tree, you put a tree back in. So we're taking out one, putting back three. Do you need to know the location, Ms. Bruce? Do I need to know where they are? Yes. You do? Mm -hmm. So this, th uh, this one is Japanese maple here. Okay. So that would be the third one. That would be the third one. So hydrangea and azaleas, okay. Camellias. Mm -hmm. okay. Can you go down, thank you, can you go down to the upper part? Because that's where a lot of planting is. Mm -hmm. Thank you right there, camellias, butterfly bushes. You're actually taking out two of the neighbor's tree though? Taking out one tree and putting in three. Just one of the neighbor's trees? I'm sorry? You have one here, you're taking out two of the neighbor's trees. No, that's... Yeah, I see that. Good, good catch. But, uh, maybe, that maybe that's why we have three. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's three. The deal, the deal is that brick wall, and we have pictures we could show you. Uh, the survey divides that wall in half. So the half belongs to, to that property yeah. owner. Yeah. The wall was about to fall. It's, it's in not very good shape at all. At some point, it will fall. Yeah. And the reason for that failure that is, is the roots of these two trees. Yeah. So whenever my owner and that owner can get together and agree, um, the wall needs to be rebuilt. So that's a whole separate project, though. It would have, they would have to come back to you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I got it. Yeah. Well, and uh, if it's just tree removal, that then is a minor. So these two tree removals is, is part of this project or not? He's going to have to come back for that. That's somebody so, else's project. Yeah, I think he mentioned that um, they were wanting to do that project first because they don't want to end up doing all of this nice landscaping and paving and, and the gates and everything and have to drive a truck back there to rebuild the, the brick masonry wall. Okay. Uh, there is, of course, the potential that it's maybe they could come in from the neighbor's property, but that's yet also yet again to be negotiated, right? <laughs> so, so, so that may end up coming, that may end up happening first before this even gets constructed, or at least that half of it gets constructed. So my question was, these two trees over here on the left that are going to be the new existing trees, is that part of this application? No, no, no. no. Okay. Anything else you want to say at this point in time? No, I think that addresses everything that we talked about at the design review. Uh, say that again? That does address everything talked about design review. There is a new gate design that I sent you. Yes. Yep. 
I showed that. Yeah, that's got the squirrel and crow work at the top. No, so I showed both. I showed, I probably should not have shown that. <laughs> you can go to the sun drive. Uh, I, they're all here. They're all here. I copied it from the thumb drive. Uh, let's see. That, that's the new one, right? No. What? Oh, well, that was the one you sent in an email. Just this morning or yesterday. Yeah, there was another follow up. To that. Oh, yeah. I, I didn't catch the one after this morning. Okay, you're a busy man. So yeah. I yeah, that's true. So there's yeah. another gate. This is not the gate. I'm still working on yesterday's emails. So this is not the gate you're going to use. Huh? Yeah, the scroll work at the top has been eliminated. So that you have a third panel that has the same look and design as the two lower panels. So that's a solid gate with the height. So it, this was for privacy as much as anything. And with the height of the gate, someone can't look through. So the owner had me change to remove the scroll work at the top. Okay. So it's going to be. So it's a solid gate, which we do not have a picture of. Is that right? Well, we have a picture of the the middle and the bottom panels, and so he's saying that the top panel that currently has the scroll work uh, would have that same solid design that the middle and the bottom. Oh, is there? Okay. Yep. I do have a picture. Uh, so, if you want to put it up on the head projector, we can do that. Does it work? Yeah, it does. Do you? Do you well, it would be better if we put it on the screen and it was recording. So it may take about half a minute. Oh, oh that's fast. <laughs> I think we just had a time, time jump. You did. You did. So there you see the, uh, the new proposed. Gate. Okay, that's the new gate. That, that, as you mm -hmm. said, is the same panel. Okay, and we may have discussion about some of the rest of this. Is there anything else you want to say at this point in time? No. Okay. So, uh, do we have any proponents for this out in the audience? We only have two people. Do we have any opponents to this? Okay, we have an opponent to this. So if you would come, so if you're going to testify, does she need to be sworn in if she's going to testify? So you need to, you need to swear her in. Peggy, do you need to swear you in? Oh, we do. Yes. yes. Do you swear to tell the truth to the best of your knowledge? I do. And we need you to sign it for the Maybe you grab it. Thank you. Okay, I would not say that I So am. let's start with your name and how you're related to this house. Okay, I'm Peggy Broadway, and I live at 214 Change Street, the house next door. Okay, now have it. Okay, and um, I'm not really an opponent. I just have some questions. Um, first of all, um, in the first drawing that we got from the architect, he did not have the complete gin lined out as we see it in what Matt sent out, you know, with the swing and the long walk like this. Okay, so my question to you is, and I don't know the answer, when we have a little play area like that and it has a building on it, do we have to know the height of the building and stuff like that as if it were a, you know, a supply building outside or do we, Matt? So your question is, one of these play things has a building, has a top to it? Yeah. Okay, well, I see what you're talking about, this gym that you're going, going up. Is that what you're referring to? Yeah, but it looks like a shed, and it has a, a, a walk coming down. Like a down clubhouse, from. like a little clubhouse. What? It's, it's like a little clubhouse on top of the gym. It's called a clubhouse? Well, I don't know, but it's what... A tree house without a tree. Yeah. So <laughs> do we need the, the height on that mat and the 
uh, dimensions or anything are required? We have no guidelines um, specifically related to play structures. Um, so I think it's... Do you have a building permit? Do you know? Is it tied down in any way? I don't know that either. But there is a building permit required for the whole project. So um, now, if I may add, it seems that the photographs that you're looking at are represent representations of possible play structures because they're all different. So, just uh, not included in this drawing, though. Just, what? Why are they there then? It was probably they're, they're, they're there. Yeah. But the, he's saying those may not be the exact one. Right. And I didn't see any referred to in this in the in the proposal. The right There's the playground. Oh, area playground area. things. Okay. So. So which one is it going to be? So if you would come up to the microphone, we can't hear you. Speak, speak loud. The images were pulled off the internet and placed on the drawing uh, as a matter of presentation to give suggestions and ideas to the owners of what they might could do in that small little playground area. Uh, the owners have a very small, young child, and so they're going to use that as a place for him to play. And we simply were trying to be helpful. Uh, this is not in any way, shape, or form telling the commission anything about what's going on in that playground. So does that mean you would be coming back with the plan when it's decided? On the playground? Yeah. With ATC? Yeah. If it's going to be a structure. That's what I'm asking. If, it, if it's a structure, don't we have to have some dimensions for a structure? Madam Chair, maybe yeah, I could be question. helpful. Okay. Depending on the, the selection that the property owners make about whatever playset they choose, that would determine whether it's a, a structure. If they decide they want to build a little house, that might be a structure. If they decide that they want to put up a slide with a swing, that may not be a structure. Yeah. So at this juncture, I don't think anybody's in a position to answer that question. So at this time, are you saying that he would need to come back with the plan that they do choose for that structure. I'm saying it depends. Excuse if me? it was a structure. It depends. We don't so. know if it will be a structure or not. So if it is a structure, maybe. We, no. So is, is the playground part of the application? And are we, so can we say, can we say it's not part of the application? I think well, the applicant has the given plan. some indication. I'm sorry, Mr. Tripp, I interrupted you. No, no, not at all. I'm struggling to get hold of this one. So, Ms. Peggy, in the past, we've had these kind of structures come before us. I think there's one at the Episcopal Church. I think there's one at the Presbyterian Church. The Generally Church. speaking, we don't have guidelines that um, apply to the three-dimensional aspect of, of the playground equipment, but we have... Um, given some indication that it was located appropriately on the site. And so perhaps in this case, I think what we're seeing is the owner would like to put some playground equipment in a tertiary area. And I think that's all we would need to see at this point. And, and if um, one were really concerned, I, I would suggest we uh, um, have a condition where the applicant come back and show staff the specific variety that was ultimately picked out. Yes. Is there a difference between a playground in a commercial area like a church versus private residence? I don't know, Tripp. <clears throat> that's why I'm asking. I, I, I don't think so. There's nothing be, in our be, Because um, the question you pose seems to be based on use of the property and our guidelines don't follow use of the property. Okay, so as I understand what you're saying, he would once they decide, he would need to bring it back. Yes, it, we could put a condition it, it, that would say yeah. But But it seems to me what Mr. Vaughn has indicated is whatever comes back doesn't come back from Mr. Vaughn. 
but from the homeowner himself at some date in the future when Mr. Vaughn's portion of this project has been completed and the kid is bigger and they're ready for a playground? Well, it would depend. Either he could bring, they could bring it back or if they wanted him to be their representative, he could bring it back. But I think for the purposes of this application, there's no swing set. How does that sound, Tripp? Well, we'll have to hash it out, it seems. I, or that, was, that seems to be my understanding. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, another thing that I had a question on was on the extension of the roof over the kitchen area, how big an extension is that? And is, does it attach to the current roof or uh, is it separate? So it is coplanar with the existing roof. It is part of, it is the roof. Um, the, and it is contiguous to the existing, and the existing roof and the uh, porch roof. So let me see. Um, let's go to the elevations, right? Somewhere down at the landscape. So, let's see, that's not it. Here we go. All right. On this drawing, I'm going to make this even bigger to make it even more clear. All right. So, you can see uh, the screened-in porch here, right? Right. And there's a roof over it. Um, currently, the roof for the entire back of the house ends at this dashed line these three dashed lines, right? So they're extending the roof over the screened-in porch out, um, and it is a continuation of the existing roof, all right? And then the same thing is happening over here over the uh, kitchen area, uh, except they're extending it even farther out, and so since it's sloping down, it shows up in this elevation as being longer and lower. So it is all one big plane cut off at different spots. Okay, so Matt, does that mean, I'm asking because I don't know, does that mean that they would have to take the, since it's a metal mm -hmm. roof, they would take off what is there and make one continuous piece coming down? Uh, I think we should ask the contractor. And um, It would not be pieced in other words. That's how what about, I'm asking. How, about how, the will you, how, the will you, how will you extend it? How will you extend yeah, it? Yeah, if the slope stick comes down like this and that's where it ends, uh -huh. now how will you fasten another piece of, of roofing to that? To, to extend it from it? It'll be slid up underneath. It'll go underneath. Yes. Yeah. Oh, good. Very good. Thank you. I wondered how that worked. <laughs> okay. All right. Now, the next but the old, last one is uh, on the gate coming in the, down the driveway, did, are those little um, elevated things up over, are they the same height as the wall, the wall that's next door? But that's coming down this way? Yes, our new, our new wall that we did and the new column would not be higher than the existing wall. Yeah, okay, thank you. And I do, they have a little son named Dallin and I certainly want him to have a play area. But at the same time, I just wondered what their guidelines were with regard to structures like play areas. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, so we went through proponents, opponents. Uh, does anybody else have anything to say, any rebuttal or anything from that? Okay, is there anybody with relevant evidence and standing that wishes to speak? We, we're running out of people, actually. Is there anybody from the city, state, or government that wants to speak? Again, we've run out of people. So, <clears throat> let us then have the HPC administrator tell us the staff's findings, and then, sir, I'll ask you if you have anything else you want to add. Okay, so let's have your findings, sir. All right, coming down to it. So these 
are the recommendations, findings and recommendations for Dr. and Ms. Scott McClellan and Lucian Vaughn Tarheel Associates for the project at 212 Chain Street. The historic property name is the Seymour Rental House and it is a contributing structure. The National Register Inventory Description is from 2003, was built, the house was built around 1890 to 95. Uh, two stories, L plan, tall bay window in the left front facade and wraparound porch and pedimented roof gables. The Sandbeck description is quite extensive and I pulled out the one bit that had anything to do with this project and that is the house is distinguished by its four pedimented gables. So there's one on each side. All right, so the project uh, is for 212 Chain Street to include an extension to the enclosed rear porch, rear roof overhang extension, a new pergola, a new brick and metal gateway, a new landscaping, and a storage closet addition to the accessory dwelling unit, all in the secondary and tertiary ABCs. So staff submits the following historic district guidelines are appropriate to this application. For landscaping, 2.4.1, 3, and 7. For fences and garden walls, 2.5.1. For design principles 3.1.1 and 5. For modifications, whoops. Three point two point one and three. Yikes. For additions, 3.3.1, 2, and 3. For foundations, 4.1.1, 3, and 4. For walls, trim, and ornamentation, 4.2.1 and 4. For entrances, 4.4.1 and 5. For roofs, 4.5.1 and 4. For masonry, 5.1.1, 2, and 3. And 4 and 5. For wood, 5.2.1 and 2. For metals, 5.3.1, 2, 3, and 4. For paint, 5.4.2, 3, and 4. The statements of reason based on the information contained in the application and staff's judgment are, one, the project is located in the tight weave development pattern. Why did that happen again? And primarily in the tertiary, but also the secondary ABCs. Two, the proposal is a project that is a combination of rear porch and patio expansion landscaping and a new rear gate near new rear yard gate. Three, the proposed design components and materials meet the requirements of the guidelines. Four, the zoning administrator and the chief building official have reviewed this project and commented accordingly. And five, the project is not incongruous with the guidelines. So staff recommends the commission approve this application to an include an extension to the enclosed rear porch, rear roof overhang extension, a new pergola, a new brick and metal gateway, new landscaping, and a storage closet addition to the accessory dwelling unit, all in the secondary and tertiary ABCs. Okay, sir, do you have any other comments you would like to make? None at this time. Members of the commission, what questions might you have? There's a lot in this small area in this application. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of different things that you can look at. So does anybody have any questions they want to ask the, at this time. Well, was there a discussion of design review about the height of the gate and the fence? Yes, I'm coming to that. I'm going to okay. ask a question about that right now. So, uh, can we go back to look at the gate and the columns beside the gate? Because, yes, we did discuss that at design review. <clears throat> Okay, so the gate is uh, six foot. The columns, you said, are the same as the fence that goes down, looking at the house, the right-hand side of the house. Is that right? Do you have a picture of that fence? The drawing there does show um, their representation of it on the right-hand side. Do you see that? I do see the representation. I'm asking yeah. if he has an actual picture. That's right. Yeah. Of 
how tall that fence is. All these exterior pictures. Oh, that's more. Where where that white wood fence is is where our new fence is going in place of that. It would be a privacy fence as opposed to just a, I mean a privacy gate and fence as opposed to just being able to see through it. So is this, so I'm asking this question because I'm unsure because I, I, I'm not there looking at that. So is this new, this new gate that's six foot tall is it far enough back on the property such that we are not limited to a four-foot gate in the front? Yes, definitely. It is back far enough. Oh, yes. You've been there to look at it. No, it's, uh, it is way back behind the front facade of the house. Okay. So that being six foot is yep. okay. Yep. The, his uh, site plan shows that. Right. There you go. <laughs> okay. That's way back here. Uh, okay. All right, I just want to be sure that we have these pictures in here because uh, we have lots of people that come and have issues with us about gates and about fences. And so I want it to be perfectly clear why these columns on your gate are as tall as they are. Because we're making the same accommodation here that we made to the lady that had the house that already had these tall columns. I'm not sure the number of that house, but we had to make the same accommodations to get the gate there mm -hmm. because of how high the columns already were. That's correct. And this is the same accommodation that we are making here that because that fence is already that tall, it was built before we were here that we're making the accommodation that the columns for the fence and the height of the fence is accommodating what is already there. Does, is that clear to everybody what we're doing? Does everybody agree with that? I see you shaking the head. Okay. I just want these pictures in there and I just want to make sure that we understand why we are making this accommodation because this is not normally what we would allow. You understand that? No. No, you don't? You don't, you don't understand that? Mm -hmm. You don't understand that we would normally not accommodate the height of the walls that you have down the right side and side of your house, this house? In this case, to match existing. That's not the question I asked. Seems to be appropriate to match existing. That's not what I, that's not what I asked. If he was building it brand new, you wouldn't allow it. Yes, but, if we could, but because it's pre-existing. Right, okay. and I'm saying, do you understand that? Uh, Okay, that's fine. That, that's, that's all I'm trying to do. So that we don't have somebody else come back and say, look what they did down there at 211 Chain Street. Okay? Because we, we <laughs> as a board, have to face this all the time. She was just that's confirming right. that it was an exception due to the existing wall. Okay. Yes. Okay. Does anybody else have any questions they want to ask at this point in time? Okay, so we need to have a motion for this uh, uh, application here with a condition that when any, can I say playground, is that what you have identified on your? Uh, yeah, can I make a comment? Well, not really. All right, no, let me not, know. Not, let really. Me know. Okay. not really, we're, we're where we are. So that uh, with, with the condition that when any playground equipment is going to be placed on the back of the property that they consult with Matt about the size and the type of equipment that it's going to be in case they do need to come back to the HPC. Can we say that any structure put there subject to the purview of HPC should come back to HPC? Yes. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah. Let, let, yeah. <clears throat> let, let me suggest that we have a guideline for accessory structures 2.6.3 and it says accessory structures such as sheds, gazebos, pergolas, arbors, trellises and similar types of site improvements with minimal foundations which I would consider any kind of playground equipment um, are to serve as a, 
focal points within rear yard landscapes. These forms have detail. These forms and detailing have little relationship to historic fabric and can be easily removed without creating permanent damage. So I think that's kind of our guideline to cover this. And part of the guideline says a rear yard, and I believe we're in a tertiary area of visual concern. And, and so what, what I would suggest is um, we're really evaluating whether in fact what's shown in the drawings is in the backyard. And the only other thing that we, um, uh, uh, this has sometimes come up as minors, and so what we review is usually these play structures have some kind of loose material underneath them. So we usually review what the edging material is for that, or at least remind them what's not allowed as edging material. So that would be maybe the only follow-up question would be, what is the edging material around that? Playground equipment is not part of my application. Say that again? Yep. Playground equipment is not part of the application that you are being asked to approve. Second, yeah, we understand that. When I walked in at Design Review on March the 2nd, I brought with me design drawings. It had pictures, images from the internet, which is what you've been looking at tonight. After one week later, as I was required to on March 9th, I brought an entire new set of drawings and documents. Mm -hmm. All those pictures were removed. Mm -hmm. no, no furniture underneath the pergola, no fire pit, no playground equipment. Uh, so the March 9th thumb drive I brought to your office, and I'm not throwing you under the bus, but what, what you showed was my design stuff. And that's why all this discussion has occurred. If we had looked at just my March 9 thumb drive, mm -hmm. none of that was on there. And that's really what the board should be, the commission should be approving, is what I brought back one week later as a result of the design review. Well, the board is being attentive to people in the audience who have questions about this. Well, what and are you saying? That that's not part of the application. If it's not. not on the application that he submitted, then it's not part of the application. And so yeah. we inadvertently got shown stuff that's not part of the application. So that's, that's just kind of where we are. Well, there is you know, on the application something that says a play area. But that's yeah, not the application that he submitted. It does say playground if you look on it. So he's what? saying that was not the plan that he meant to have on there. So right now, this is a drawing that comes straight from his flash drive. Uh, I'll, wait, I'll close this actually and go back again. It's dated 3 9, and then there's a gate plan dated 3 9. The rest of the drawings that are also on the flash drive are 3 1 dated. So uh, these were what were provided on the flash drive. So I used all of these for the presentation tonight because I was told these were the ones that were the up-to-date ones. Now it turns out there's two landscaping plans. One's a backyard landscape plan and the other one's a landscaping plan. I've included both, but nevertheless, this one on the ninth, I'll show you, click on it. This is what it has. We got the overheat on. Oh, sorry. This is the, uh, uh, as soon as it comes up. So these are the files for the landscaping, or for directly from the thumb drive, the LexRD drive. Um, there are two files that were new on the 9th, the rest were from the 1st. 
I copied all of them over in order to make sure that these were the drawings that he wanted presented. I suppose I did not understand that he only wanted these two drawings and none of the rest. That's, that's an easy mistake to make. So anyhow, um, I'll click on that one and it still does show laid ground on it. All, right. so, all, all of that being said, is Mr. Vaughn interested in a motion or not? Well, <laughs> so, I was asked to speak. Yeah, I mean, so uh, uh, one is to, as he's now uh, suggested that he's withdrawing that from the application, which he can do um, during the meeting. Um, and then that's no longer necessary to address. And we're done. Or he's withdrawing this part of his application where it says playground? Correct and that little representation of something or another. It represents he can do that? Yes, ma'am. Madam Chair, he, the applicant can withdraw or amend their application at any point before a decision is rendered. Okay. And so you're going to remove that from the application? Is that what you're saying? Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. So that's been removed from the application, so we can stop that discussion. So does somebody have anything else you want to ask? Okay, can we have a motion? Certainly. Thank you. <laughs> I was going to do it. Jim, you want to do, do it? it? I'll do it. You I got was it, all ready. I had everything up. You got it, Annette. Helen can do it. Anybody, you want to do it? Go for it, Annette. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I moved to find the application for 212 Chain Street to be not incongruous with New Bern's Code of Ordinances, sections 15.4, 11-15, dot 429 and New Bern's Historic District Guidelines based on the following specific guidelines and findings of fact. So, here we go. So, landscaping. 2.41, uh, 2.43, 2.47. Fences and garden walls. 2.5.1. Design principles. 3.1.1. 3.1.5. Can you scroll for me? I'm sorry. Please? Thanks. <laughs> I'm using my finger. We'll go. Let's see. Modifications 3.2.1, 3.2.2. Is that what that was? No, 3. 3. Okay. Sorry. Um, okay. All right. Being tricky. Okay. So additions 3.3.1. 3.3.2 and 3.3.3. .3. Uh, foundations 4.1.1, 4.1.3 and 4. Walls and trim, walls, trim and ornamentation 4.2.1, 4.2.4. Entrances 4.4.1, 4.4.5. Roofs, 4.5.1, 4.5.4. Masonry, 5.1.1, 2 and 3, 4 and 5. Uh, wood, 5.2.1 and 2. Metals, 5.3, 1, 2, 3 and 4. Paint, 5.4.2. Three and four, and findings of fact are that the project is located within the narrow stitch development pattern, primarily in the tertiary, but also in actually the tight weave. Tight weave, sorry, tight weave. Okay, oh, all right, tight weave development yep. pattern, tertiary, but also the secondary areas of visual concern. The proposal is a project that is a combination of rear porch and patio expansion landscaping and a new rear yard gate. The proposed design, components, and materials meet the requirements of the guidelines. The zoning administrator and the chief of building official have reviewed this project and commented accordingly and that the project is not incongruous with the guidelines. Okay, so we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. second. We have a second here. Motion. All of those in favor say aye. Aye. All of those opposed? Hearing none, the motion passed. Do we have a motion to issue a COA? So moved. Who moved it? Alan. 
have a move in here. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second here. All of those in favor say aye. 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 All of those opposed, hearing none, the COA can be can be issued. Tony, were you the second? Jim? Okay. Uh, he, he was second. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, can we have a motion for Ms. Peggy to come back? So moved. Do we have a second? <laughs> second. Really? Have a second. We have a second here. Moved over there, second here. All of those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, here we go. Ms. Peggy, please come, come back to your assigned seat. Okay, while she's doing that, item number five, old business. We don't have any at this point in time. Uh, general public comments. We have one person left in our general public. Anything you wish to say? <laughs> Shaking the head no this way. Have to be Thank, sworn you. In or anything. Thank you for being here. No. <laughs> so item seven, new business. Um, we have one item there, and my comrade here is going to take care of that item. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. So our uh, next um, certificate for appropriateness hearing meeting, which I believe is April 20th. Uh, both uh, I and Madam Chair are unavailable um, for that meeting, albeit we'll be in different places in case you were just wondering. <laughs> and so uh, uh, the, we have conferred, and uh, what I, we would like to do is, is appoint a temporary chair temporary vice chair to mm -hmm. handle that meeting in our absence. And so um, Jim Bisbee, we would like to uh, appoint as our temporary chair and Annette Stone as our temporary vice chair should Jim be able to unable to handle things. And so I think we've conferred with council and that we may need a vote for that Madam Chair. We well, we've to, conferred we with to, staff okay. that we may need a vote for that. We need to vote for that? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so can we have a motion for that? I move that for the April public hearing of the Historic Preservation Commission. On Jim, such and such a day. Oh, April dear. The 20th, April the 20th at 30 in the courtroom. Is that right, ma'am? Yes, you <laughs> can do that. You make a statement. Of time. the New Bern City Hall, okay. Jim Bisbee act as chair and Annette Stone act as vice chair for that meeting. So we have a motion. Do we have a second? second. We have a second for Ms. Peggy. Ms. Peggy is the hmm. second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, the motion passed. Okay, so item eight is the administrator's report. Um, you see item A for majors and minors. And the COA extensions, there are none for that. Um, other items and uh, updates, uh, one for that is going to be the resilience plan, which our administrator is going to give us some information on that. Sure. So I know uh, we've been trying to update you over the past couple of years on this plan as it's been progressing, uh, and it has finally reached its uh, goal line. Uh, is up for adoption at a public hearing at the Board of Aldermen meeting next Tuesday evening at 6 p.m. in this very room. If you or anyone else is interested in attending that public hearing, um, I have uh, some representative. Uh, well, I actually have the entire plan and all of its appendices uh, loaded up here. Um, <clears throat> so it's 801 pages. Good. Uh, so, shall we go through yes, every I'll one of those? <laughs> no, thank you very much. Yeah, exactly. I'll just so, uh, this is the cover, uh, and uh, this is the table of contents. Um, but um, uh, you may, uh, this is available online at the on the city's website under the development services uh, uh, section of the website, and there is a resiliency page. Uh, and when you get to the resiliency page, um, it is on the right-hand side, right underneath the big yellow star. So somebody put a star on our paper, and so it's right there underneath the star, and then it will pull up uh, the entire thing. It's uh, 45 megabytes. 
but uh, just wanted to show you some um, uh, major parts of the plan. Um, <clears throat> you could look at the executive summary, and here, for example, it shows the study area is actually quite a bit larger than the actual city limits. City limits are shown in the blue area, the blue line uh, shown there in this map, and then the black line is the study area. Uh, because resiliency, in this case, we're talking about primarily uh, resiliency from major flooding storms, uh, so hurricanes uh, and large um, storms like that. So um, you can know that, of course, uh, the storm's effects and our um, concerns might go beyond our city limits. Uh, so we're talking about upstream issues as well as evacuation issues, as well as infrastructure, uh, issues all in this document. <clears throat> so, um, another big part of this was the um, the planning process uh, was very uh, robust in public participation and input. So there were uh, several public meetings. Um, I'm going to go back a second, um, but I saw it said public meeting four. So. The, uh, many different public input opportunities. Um, and then, <clears throat> in addition to public input, there was an analysis of our current capacities, our current infrastructure, our current um, uh, support systems for various things. Uh, the, it even concerned itself with um, uh, what happens when people need food or need shelter during a storm. So um, some of those issues were also addressed. So it's also partially a hazard mitigation plan. And so um, once or if it's adopted on this coming Tuesday, our next step would be actually to uh, incorporate it into the regional hazard mitigation plan uh, so that it becomes part of the overall planning for the entire region here. All right, um, and there is a page down here where, we t where it basically talks about the, uh, oh, I thought it would be sooner than that. There is uh, a, uh, the analysis of the existing um, conditions uh, in the study area were studied and uh, input in a computer program that also helps the city to understand the ramifications of various types and degrees of inundation or storm related um, effects so that we would be able to, to know maybe what are the first priority things to take care of, the second priority, et cetera. So it helps us prioritize uh, our efforts and these uh, these uh, images here, the um, illustrations, begin to show some of that. Um, it even goes, however, down to the actual building level. Um, in this case, um, this one is showing roads and properties potentially inaccessible to a 100-year floodplain inundation, <coughs> and a map showing the number of all properties potentially inaccessible within the study, uh, within for the study on the bottom. So um, the people in this area would, well, the city would know which people in this area of the city would be stranded essentially by uh, a flooding condition, or in this case, inundated. So those are some of the examples. So, but the concern for this commission is regarding the history, the historic structures. And there's a whole section um, the, of goals and objectives, um, you can see them listed here, the first four, and then the sixth one is cultural heritage. And that's where the historic preservation uh, uh, goals and objectives were um, gathered together uh, into one section. So, <clears throat> uh, so once you get into the plan, you can go ahead and read some of those. And then we have all of the various appendices. So. The plan itself is 150 pages. All the appendices then are 650 pages. <laughs> wow. 
So you might want to skim over those a little bit. Um, and uh, I think that is enough for that. Does anyone have any questions? Thank you very much for, much for your overview. Okay. That's amazing. Do we have any commissioner comments at this at this point in time that anyone would like to make? At, at some point, uh, do, you, do you think you would summarize the particular implications for us and and go over those? Yeah. Yeah. So um, that would be that, very appropriate night, yes, to say yes. go over at the next design review meeting. Yes. Uh, yeah. And go over in more detail. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah. Very, very good suggestion. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Can I have a motion that we adjourn? Yep. I have a motion over oh, wait. here. Uh, do you, are there Sorry. any comments from any other commissioners at this point? I think he asked. She asked too. Oh, she did? Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't hear that. Sorry. I apologize. Motion to did adjourn. You, did you make a motion? <laughs> we have a motion over here to adjourn. Do we have a second? Second. Second. We have here. John, second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those against? Leave it. <laughs>